folks, E. King here once again, and in this video, we're going to talk about different practices within the bail bond industry. And uh, I've got a couple of clips here, as always, that I'm going to show you that I, I just happened to find on YouTube. And But before I show you this clip, I, I just kind of want to preface it a little bit like I always do. Uh, in this video, you're going to see uh, Dave from his, his show. He's got the David Packard show, and then he's going to be talking to a guy. Uh, his name is Alec. I, I, it's hard for me to pronounce his last name, so we'll just leave it at Alec. Uh, they're both good guys. Uh, Alec is a, a civil attorney that, that advocates for people's rights, especially in the criminal justice system. Those that can't, uh, that he, he feels aren't, aren't being treated fairly for usually due to economic reasons uh, within the criminal justice system. I am not here to debunk what these guys are doing. Um, we're going to listen to what they're doing, and then we're going to talk about just a little bit about uh, the other side of the coin, if you will, and what uh, the general um, practice for bail enforcement agents and bail bondsmen are within the industry, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, I, again, I will try to keep this video uh, around 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you know, usually when I say that, they always turn it into part ones, twos, and threes. So, but uh, let's just jump right into it, and I'll I'll be directors cutting it and, and stopping and pausing uh, throughout the clip. So let's go. Transforming the American criminal justice system, injustice system. Alec, we've been talking about bail and the bail bond system in the United States for a very long time. Let's sort of start at the most fundamental level. Uh, when someone is brought in to court. Uh, what is the basis on which uh, the amount of bail is decided and whether there is even bail at all? So after someone's arrested in all 50 states, they're, they're brought to jail, and in most circumstances they're told, you're eligible for release immediately, but you have to give us some money first. And in some places that decision is based on a, a chart that is based purely on the offense that the person has been charged with. And in other places they go before some officer, some magistrate, some judge, and the judge just sort of picks a number or an amount of money, and typically that's happening without any inquiry at all into whether the person can afford that amount of money. That's interestingly not the case in the District of Columbia, where I live and practice, or in any of the federal courts in any of the 50 states around the country. And, and there is a reason for it, the, uh, why that is, there is no bail in the District of Columbia. Uh, it's not for the scope of, of this topic and this conversation. So if you'd like to know more, or, and if you'd like to discuss that in detail, uh, feel free to give me a call, 1-800-320-1357. Uh, comment, though, let me know what your take is on the, the amounts, words, the amount of money that the judge, the magistrate, whoever it is that is setting the bail, uh, sets bail. Uh, I'd like to know what you all are experiencing in your local area. How you know how how is the bail industry in your particular area? So give me a comment below and and uh, let's get some dialogue going about that as well. Those systems, people are released prior to trial without having to uh, pay any money um, unless the government proves that they're a danger to the community or risk of flight. And so in the federal system and in D.C., decisions about whether a human being is kept in a cage prior to trial are made based on evidence and about whether they're a danger rather than based on someone's poverty. But in all of the other states, um, whether you stay in jail after you're arrested by the police depends solely on whether you can afford to pay bail. Okay, so uh, again, uh, there's some truth on that. There, the bail is, is it, it is up to whether you can afford it or not. Uh, but the bail bondsman does not set that those bail rates. And, and that's the thing that I am challenging here in, in, in this clip, is the bail bondsman doesn't set those rates. The judges do. The bail bondsman has, has no say over that. Uh, now, later on in this clip, he's going to talk about how uh, we, the insurance companies that back the bail bonds industry do lobby, uh, and, and they supposedly pad and, and pay the courts in that. He's going he's gonna to call out Louisiana, for example. Well, everybody knows Louisiana is the most corrupt uh, state in the union. So... Uh, again, that's not the scope of this topic. We can have a different dialogue about that uh, at, at some other time. But uh, yes, you, there, you know that we, as the bail bondsmen, we do not uh, have any control over what the judge sets for for the bond. I just want to make that point clear. Uh, I'm going to pause 
uh, the, the video here um, and skip ahead just a little bit to save us some time. Okay, hold on. And now explain how the bail bond system works. As you mentioned, your ability to pay that bail uh, may vary drastically, and it often does. So talk about what service a bail bondsman provides to someone who has been set a bail realistically that they cannot afford. So in 46 states, uh, we have what's called the commercial bail bond industry. There are four states that have outlawed bail bondsmen. The United States and the Philippines are the only two countries in the world that still allow commercial bail bondsmen. Uh, once again, now that is true, uh, and that's why uh, the Bail Enforcement Network has been training for over 20 years, both uh, bondsmen and bounty hunters, uh, but here in America as well as in uh, Manila. Uh, that part is factual, so we'll con we'll continue on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the tape here. I'm going to skip the uh, forward on this clip a little bit, and we'll talk about uh, a little bit more. Uh, but before I do, if you would like to see the entire clip, uh, I put a, a link to the description in the description below of uh, the da da I'm sorry, David Patrick Pacman's show is what it's called, the Dave Pacman show. Uh, Click the link in, in the description below if you'd like to see the entire 10-minute uh, uh, clip here. I'm going to skip forward right now. Okay, so we skipped forward a little bit. Now he's uh, he's getting ready to talk about uh, uh, say, saying that the bail industry we want high we want the bonds to be written high so that we could on, on the chance that uh, we get more money. Uh, again, I'm going to challenge that, and, and that's not. Uh, everybody's intent within the bail industry. Uh, you know, the bail industry is a, is a lucrative business, yes, like any other industry. And it's, it's a good business. And the majority of bondsmen and, and agents within the industry are, are we operate under the golden rule. Uh, which is do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Are there shady people out there? There's man, there's shady plumbers, okay? There's shady uh, doctors. There's shady lawyers. There's shady police. There's shady judges. There's shady shady TV hosts. You know, there's and then there's plenty of good ones. Okay, so what I would challenge you, the the viewer, to do is once again, just because you're saying something on this video, on uh, just because I'm saying it. Just because uh, this guy is saying it or whoever's saying it, don't take it on fact and say, oh, that's the way it is because I saw it on the Internet, so it must be true. Uh, do your own due diligence. Do your homework. And and then make the decision for yourself, okay? Uh, so that's what I have to say about this topic. Now let's hear his, his point of view on it. Because of incentives involved here, and the bail bond industry doesn't want there to be decisions made about people's dangerousness. They want people to be offered high money bonds. It's just not true. Chance they could get the money together to pay it. So when, when courts all around the country in, in most states aren't ever making the determination that someone is dangerous, they're just estimating if a, if a judge thinks that a person is dangerous in a state that uses a lot of commercial money bail, they'll just estimate an amount of money that they think the person can't afford. So they'll say, you know, a million dollars on the hope that the person can't pay it. Now there is a partial truth to that, and then, but again, I'm going to challenge that. Uh, there sometimes bonds are set intentionally high, with the hopes that the person can't pay it. And in other words, that's the that's what why they they set the bond high. They being the judge or whoever sets the bond, hoping to keep that individual there so that he won't get out and, and do any more harm to society, or potentially allegedly do any more harm to society. Okay. Once again, uh, the we, the bail bondsman, has no control over what that judge sets. Uh, and we don't just want bonds to be set high so that uh, we can get more money. In fact, one time I got a call and, and this guy was a part of a gang and he had, he was up for a murder charge. And his was some friends of friends said, if you get this guy out of jail, he's going to go down to Mexico. He's going to pay a coyote 750 bucks. He's going to get a new birth certificate, new ID, come right back and start banging again under a different name. So don't bond him out. And and I did not bond the person out. Now his his co-signer, they gave his bond was fifty thousand dollars. They gave me a hundred thousand dollars in jewelry, in Rolex bracelets and watches, and, and personally uh, personalized necklaces. They gave me over a hundred thousand dollars in jewelry. The bond was only fifty thousand because they wanted me to pay the bond off and keep the money and look the other way as this guy bounced. So 
not all the time do we write high bonds just because we have the ability to write the high bonds or the person has the money to get out. So, uh, again, I, I will, I'll challenge that this statement that he just made. That's very unconstitutional, obviously, but that's what's happening in courts all over the country. And so no one is keeping any kind of data right now on the question that you asked, which is sort of what's happening to people that are, that are really dangerous and are they being released on bail because they're rich and, and things like that. So we don't really know. All we know is that the money bail system is keeping hundreds of thousands of very low-risk Nonviolent and, and um, otherwise, uh, and offenders that we know through the data aren't likely to commit new offenses uh, while they're pending trial um, in jail just because they're poor. Okay, so in this next segment, now he's going to talk about how we, we get paid. And he's going to say that uh, we're, we're getting these high sums of money, we being the bail bondsmen, are getting high sums of money and, and just, just, you know, raking people over the coals to get this money to come in. And, uh, it, it's, it's, it's like free money because we're backed by insurance companies. Now, that is true. A lot of people don't realize that uh, uh, the insurance, bail bondsmen are technically insurance agents. We are governed by the, the insurance departments of, of the whatever state we reside in. Um, but just like your car insurance guy, okay, if your car insurance guy is writing a bunch of high-risk policies and writing, you know, if he's out here insuring people that repeatedly get into wrecks that are you know driving while habitual violators that are driving getting a lot of DUI so on and so forth then that whatever underwriting insurance company backs him sooner or later they're going to drop him and they're going to say look man you're taking on too much high risk for us to be comfortable with uh, we're going to part ways and not do business with you anymore the same thing applies for the bail bondsman if the bail bondsman is writing a bunch of bad bonds that the insurance company has to pay off sooner or later that insurance underwriter is going to part ways because they're not in the business to pay off a bunch of bad bonds they're not in the business to take on high uh, unsecured risk okay so I, I'm, I'm I'm challenging once again what this guy is saying it's not like we're just backed by the insurance company and we just get free money all day long let's hear what his opinion is on it true all of those empirical claims of the bond industry are a complete fabrication the other really interesting point is um, what they've negotiated for in a lot of states and a lot of jurisdictions is a grace period so they don't have to even if the person does skip out, they don't have to make that payment for two, three, four years, right? And so what you see then is they rely on the police. Um, it's very, very common. In a and again, I'm going to challenge that as well. Uh, we do not rely on the police. In fact, I'd say that the police rely on us just as much, if not more, uh, to help them out there in the, in the field. There's been plenty of times I've been contacted by law enforcement and said, hey, man, we don't have a warrant to go in this house, but we know you've got him on bond. Can you help us out? So, again, that's this is just uh, one person's opinion, and I'm giving you the opposing view of it as well, and, and, you know, a different side of it. And you draw your own conclusion, okay, as to what the truth is. Uh, but, that, yeah, that's just not true. We do not rely on the police to do our work. In fact, you'll see there, do your own due diligence. Once again, uh, statistics will show you that anywhere from 60 to 85 percent of all arrests conducted in the United States are done by bail enforcement agents and bail bondsmen. That means 15 out of every 100 arrests in the United States are conducted by law enforcement. That's everybody from the CIA, NSA, FBI, down to your local county constable. They're only doing 15 out of every 100 arrests. And I would say the majority of those arrests are reactionary arrests. And what I mean by that is when they wake up in the morning, they didn't wake up saying, hey, I think I'm going to take E. King to jail today. But that's exactly what we do. We, we decide the time, place, down sometimes to the very second that we're going to actually apprehend an individual and take them to jail. So uh, I, I am just really going to challenge this statement that he's saying right here. Our society that the police will then pick somebody up on a warrant because we've got U.S. Marshals and local police and sheriffs who are out looking for people if they ever skip court. And when those people are then brought back in by the police, not by the bail industry, the bail industry doesn't have to pay. Um, so they, they sort of free ride on law enforcement to, to assure themselves of never having to put any risk up. And as you say, even on the very, very, very small number of cases where they are exposed because they, the person skipped um, court, uh, they have insurance to protect themselves from that. And it's actually those insurance companies not individual bail bonds people, but those insurance companies that are providing a lot of the, the lobbying and the money and the financial support for a lot of these, these 
there, there, there probably is some truth okay, to that one. Another example. It's yet another example where there's sort of capitalism for the profits while you socialize the risk. That's exactly right. And, and what's really I, I, I would, I would agree with that. Law enforcement leaders all over the country, the Department of Justice, federal prosecutors. Uh, I'm going to cut off right here. We're at right about my 15-minute mark. Uh, once again, I just wanted you to see uh, the uh, two opposing views of the same topic and the same industry. You're getting ready, you can see it from two different perspectives here, uh, and you make your own conclusion. Let me know what your thoughts are uh, in the comment section below. I'd like to hear uh, how is the bail bond practice in, in where in your neck of the woods. You know, is it good, bad, indifferent? Uh, do you like it? What do you want to see changed about it? Uh, again, leave me some comments in, in the, below, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next video.